Hi all. In this particular uh, video lecture, I will be discussing about uh, the third order nonlinear process. So till now we have uh, discussed uh, many the second order nonlinearity. Okay, so for the time being, uh, we can assume the second order uh, susceptibility is zero. So therefore, we no need to consider the second order process. Okay, so then uh, the polarization. We'll have the linear term first, epsilon zero, chi one e plus epsilon zero, chi three e cube. We can uh, neglect the all high, higher order terms. So this term uh, we should represent by symbol p one, and this term we should represent by symbol p three. Okay. So in order to make uh, the algebra simpler. Uh, we have consider uh, the incident uh, optical field is oscillatory function. So incident optical field, we can write as E equal the amplitude cos of omega t. Okay, then uh, uh, the first term, the, the first order of polarization, uh, will contribute omega frequency because that will be oscillating with uh, the frequency omega. So the P1 of T will simply become epsilon zero chi one E cos of omega T. And the third order polarization P3 that will become epsilon zero I three E cube cos cube of omega t. Now cos cube, cube of omega t we can split into two. This can be written as the combination of uh, uh, cos three omega t and cos omega t. So epsilon zero I three E cube cos of three omega t plus three cos omega t all divided by four. So by just looking at this term, we can say that uh, the third order polarization produces uh, two frequencies. One is three omega and another one is omega. Okay, so this three omega uh, means uh, it will be third harmonic of omega. So that will contribute the third harmonic generation. And the second term uh, obviously produce the, the same incident frequency. Okay. So this third order nonlinearity. Produces three omega and omega frequency. Okay, so generation of three omega frequency is called the third harmonic generation. Generation of three omega is called as third harmonic generation. Okay, and uh, the other one is uh, is very obvious. It produces omega frequency. So there is no uh, great thing about it because if you incident omega frequency to the material, okay, the same frequency can propagate to it and we'll get it as an output that is possible. Okay, so the omega frequency would be there. But apart from that, it's three omega. This is uh, very important. So three omega frequency can be generated. Okay, so that is what is called the third harmonic. Okay, anyhow, and uh, the apart from that, we have to say one thing. This uh, cos omega t term, the second term of uh, P3, has a uh, non-negligible effect. So it will uh, uh, leads to some other new phenomena. So that we will discuss later. It is called uh, the uh, intensity dependent refractive index would happen due to this term. That we will discuss later. 
okay so anyhow uh, this the the total thing uh, we'll get third harmonic generation and uh, the second term p3 produce omega frequency and its strength is quadratically depend on e okay not quadratically it depends on cubically Okay, now how we can explain this uh, third harmonic generation? Okay, so we can have a schematic of third harmonic generation. if you incident omega frequency we'll get some other frequency plus we'll get have omega frequency also as an output Okay, so by inserting the omega frequency uh, in the nonlinear crystal, which is having a third order nonlinearity, is called chi three nonlinearity, and uh, chi three nonlinear medium usually called as a Kerr medium, and it is a universal uh, uh, nonlinearity. It is uh, available in all the materials. So uh, whether the material has center of symmetry or not center of symmetry, it has um, this chi three uh, susceptibility. Okay, three nonlinear to a third order nonlinear would be there, but uh, uh, in most of the cases, uh, its strength is the chi three would be very small, and if the electric field strength is not that much huge, we cannot uh, uh, produce any uh, third order nonlinear effect. So this third order nonlinear effect will come to know only if uh, the electric field strength is very large. Okay. Because we we already seen that uh, the chi three order of chi three strength is to minus twenty four, so it's very small value. Now, what is the uh, the energy level diagram of this process? So the energy level diagram we can explain. So initially, the atom would be in the ground state. Now, uh, by absorbing uh, three photons together, okay, so it would be a three photon absorption rather than a two photon absorption. So first it reaches a virtual level, second virtual level, and it will reach a third virtual level. So from this, uh, it the x eight to the ground state by emitting three omega photon. Okay, so three photons of frequency omega are absorbed here, and finally you will be getting a three omega photon outside. So this is the energy level diagram of uh, the third harmonic generation. This is schematic diagram of the third harmonic generation. Okay, uh, so and uh, the one more thing again, uh, this has to satisfy the phase matching condition in order to get uh, this generation. So uh, so even though if you have a sufficient intensity light and uh, um, chi three Uh, the third order nonlinear media, the current media, you may not get uh, the third harmonic generation. Okay, so uh, it will happen only 
uh, incident light at some particular direction at some particular axis along some particular axis which uh, obeys the phase matching condition so that is very important so that uh, the tunability and that adjustment is um, it's very important so for that we should know about uh, the structure of the crystal and so on so the crystallography would be very important for such uh, the experimental production of third harmonic generation and even the second harmonic generation so on okay uh, so with this we can uh, stop the discussion now about um, the third order non linear process and third harmonic generation and there are other processes of uh, the third order non linearity So the main thing is self-focusing. So that we'll discuss in the next session. Okay. Uh, the self-focusing. The intensity dependent diffractive index so on so there are many uh the third harmonic generation process but uh, we'll be discussing about only very few so basically we'll be discussing these two and uh, they are actually uh the one uh, phenomena okay so with this we can stop it here and the next class uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the intensity dependent diffractive index and its application thank you